All right. Hey, folks. So thanks for joining me. Today's topic is going to be focused on the intermediate plateau and why we fail to gain, why we plateau and why we can't do anything about it. So firstly, thanks for making it onto my channel. If you have any questions or comments, pop them down below. And if you'd like to work with me on your own strength and physique goals, there is a link in the description. Now, um, I think most people who go from the beginner stage to the intermediate stage do so relatively effortlessly. It's quite easy to go from being a beginner to an intermediate. You just turn up for a while. Pretty much anything works. The newness of lifting weights will get you to roughly the intermediate phase. And what I see is most guys will stall at about a plate and a half to two plate bench, maybe a two and a half plate squat, maybe a three plate deadlift, and they won't really go any further. Now, the reason I think is to get to that point, it's relatively straightforward. It's relatively easy to get past that and beyond that. There are certain factors that come into play. I think one of the factors is that people just aren't used to training hard and don't turn off now, right? Don't just turn off and go, okay, Faz is going to give us a lecture about training hard. Yeah. I, I want to just share with you some specifics. Okay. Now there was a study which came out um, and it's a meta-analysis. And I know you guys aren't always that fond of studies, but this is a meta-analysis by a researcher who I really have a lot of time for. It's Dr. James Steele, really nice guy. I've interviewed him on the, um, on the channel before. But anyway, the study was called, Are We Lifting Heavy Enough? Self-Selected Loads in Resistance Training. Okay. Now that study was done by Dr. Steele and essentially the idea, and also by another guy called um, and Dr. Andrelakis Korakakis, who goes by Dr. Pack on Instagram. And basically they uh, they had lifters uh, do a test, a one rep max test, and then they gave them the option. They were either going to lift with a percentage of that one rep max, or they were going to self-select the loads. And um, what they found was most people who self-selected the loads tended to do so at about roughly half of the one rep max. So they didn't really choose to lift particularly heavy if they were allowed to just choose the weights they loaded, right? The weights they lifted. Now, why is that important for us? Well, what do most of us do? Most of us don't have percentage-based programs. We look online and we look for a five by five, three by eight, four by 12, and we self-select the loads. This study looked at thousands of, of people, and the average was that most people lifted about, self-selected about 50% of the weights. Okay, So they started off far lower than they needed to really to elicit a lot of growth. Okay, So they undershot intensity. That's the thing I want to say. That was the first study. The next study was ability to predict repetitions to momentary failure is not perfectly accurate, though improves with resistance training experience. This was also done by Dr. Steele. And the end result of this whole study was that most people underpredicted their reps in reserve by about three reps. So basically, they they kept about three more reps in the tank. So let's say you've got a guy who says, okay, I'm training to failure. He's probably got three more reps in him. Say a guy who's training with two reps in reserve, he's probably got five reps in reserve. You see what I mean? Now, neither of these should normally be an issue because, well, the idea is wherever you start, it doesn't matter because as you progress through the routine, you add weight, right? You guys are with me. So you guys might be sat at home going, well, what's the difference, Faz? Because, well, I started off light, but I'm lifting heavier and heavier and I'm three months into this and I'm, I'm not gaining. What's going on? Well, that's the problem. See, my contribution to this whole discussion is this. Like, the reason that people screw this up is they never get to that stage because they're too busy changing their routines. That's my contribution to this entire thing. So what Dr. Steele and uh, Dr. Pack have identified is people generally self-select loads which are far too light, and they also leave too many reps in reserve throughout their training career. Now, my contribution is even if you start off like that, what should happen is you should seamlessly transition into hard training because you stick to the same routine and then you add weight and eventually it gets hard, right? But people change routines far too frequently. So whenever they change something up, like they change even the set or rep execution or entire routines, they'll change every few weeks. So every time you reapproach re -approach your training, you self-select your loads and then you underperform. So you could do that for a lifetime. Imagine, like people do. People will change routine every three or four weeks. They have to readjust their weights, reselect their weights. Or let's say they they did benches first. Maybe in the next routine, they do benches last. You know, so they, they have to change the weight they use because they're changing the order. So the, the, there's no consistency there to enable them to carry on getting to the part of the routine where they're no longer working easy, but they are working hard. 
That's my contribution to this mystery of why people stay in that intermediate zone. Firstly, from beginner to intermediate, you can do it easy. Everyone can do it. it you know, a monkey with a typewriter could write a routine getting you from beginner to intermediate. It, there's no special skill in that. Getting from intermediate past that stage fails because people constantly change the routine. So they constantly get back to the start of the routine where they typically, on average, underperform and undershoot their RIR. That's the explanation. Now, you typically see powerlifters have better results. And I was a powerlifter when I first started lifting. The reason that powerlifters get better results are, on average is, well, what are they concerned with? They're concerned with their one rep max in three lifts. So all that goes out the window, okay? They might start off very light. They might start off undershooting their RIR, but it doesn't matter because all they're concerned about from year in, year out is three exercises for one rep range. That's all they care. That's all they're concerned about. So even if they change routines, it, the bottom line is still that one rep range, those three lifts, and that's how they ensure they get better and better. Most of us don't do that, and that's why we stall. So solutions. Now, my one of this came up in a recent Q&A, and I think one of the best solutions for you guys who are listening to this is use a set and rep scheme. Okay, so use a set and rep scheme which you which will which you can stick to for the duration of the year. Like I have my eights, fives, and threes routine, which is a great way of undulating volume up and down, undulating intensity up and down throughout the year, and it just keeps you progressing. But the main thing that it has you doing is the main thing it has you doing is it forces you to stick to something. It gives you a system which you can stick to. It allows for incremental gain, but mostly allows you to stick to something for long enough that you can actually get through the easy parts of the routine and progress through and gain as long as you stick to it. So I think that's the key, is having something you can stick to. Even if you change your routine, you can still stick to this rep system and use it over and over and over. And there are plenty of guys out there who have rep systems um, I know Steve Shaw from Massive Iron does. There are other guys who have long 16-week programs. They're all fine because the trick is not in the magical execution of the sets and reps. The trick is in getting you to stick to something for longer than three weeks. That's the trick. It's just what it is. So, yeah, that's that's generally sort of how I feel about this. And um, hopefully you guys kind of found that useful. But uh, I do strongly feel that in a day and age, in 2022, where we have all the information at our fingertips, we have all the knowledge, we know how to train, we have guys like myself who are on YouTube almost day in, day out, giving you information on what you should do, diet, training, otherwise, and there are still people out there who aren't gaining as they should. I fully believe this is the problem because we typically undershoot, but then we don't stick to something for long enough. And so we, get, we go right into the next routine, we undershoot there as well. And then it just becomes... We sub, it just becomes so burnt into our psyches because that's what we assume training is. You see it with lifters who have made some progress. Like training for them becomes an event. Like they, they are going to war. But if you're used to just changing routine every time the routine gets anywhere close to being hard, well, you don't really have the same training experience, do you? You don't have the same sort of view of training as they might do. So your view of training is, okay, cool, let's go training. But if it gets hard, you've got an out because subconsciously you'll just be looking for that new routine, the change, which will then lead you back to the start again in the same way, selecting lower loads, uh, keeping way too many reps in reserve, just staying easy. You'll never get to the results producing part of the routine. And I firmly believe that is a problem for 99% of guys and girls who get stuck at that intermediate plateau. They just never experience the thrill, the joy of training hard and just being in that grinding zone of a routine. And that's why, because they just change the routine so much, they go back to the beginning of a routine and again, they underperform. So they never get to that point where they're improving. I firmly believe that's the case. Right, folks, um, hopefully that was useful. Um, as I say, if you'd like to work with me on your own strength and physique goals and have somebody watch over you for a few months to, to push you through hard training, to keep an eye on you, to keep you accountable, and then go off on your own, great there's a link in the description so i look forward to speaking to you guys and let me know what you think about the video take care